Hey everybody, uh, you know who I am and you know what time it is. Uh, a, it's STEM with Mr. C. Um, and clearly, time for Tony. Hi Tony, how are you doing? No, that's not for you. There's water in those cans. Anthony, if you're gonna be on camera, you gotta say hi everybody. Yes, so everyone knows Tony. Hi Tony, how are you, you good boy? Uh, so Tony, because we have water here and he loves to see what I'm doing, I know you're a good boy. Uh, we're actually gonna be making solar water heaters today. It's gonna be awesome. Well, then get down there. <laughs> Um, we're gonna be making solar water heaters. Um, so you see, um, obviously I have water here. We're gonna talk about our materials, um, but we're gonna do a little experiment um, to see, learn about solar water heaters. We're gonna capture energy, light and heat energy from the sun. Um, and we're gonna do a little experiment about which one of these colors actually captures more heat. It's gonna be awesome. Um, and this is actually a real world uh, problem that we're solving um, is the use of renewable energy versus uh, fossil fuels like natural gas or coal-fired power plants or anything that we use to heat our water. Um, I know a lot of us probably don't like taking cold showers or baths um, and so we take hot showers. Um, and so where does that uh, water get heated up? Um, in the hot water heater. What heats up that water? Usually, it's natural gas um, or electricity. Um, and that can be, a, it can be really costly, especially if you like to take long showers. So there's a lot of houses that actually use solar water heaters. And we're going to learn a little bit about that today. Um, and we're going to, like, you know how we do it, right? We do the experiment, and then we're going to explain what's going on and why this works. OK, so let's talk about what we need for this experiment. Um, I have three cans. You guys only need two. but if you want to go above and beyond, um, you can actually use a third can if you want. Now I, let's talk about what we need first. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, what you absolutely need, um, a black painted can. So that's in my STEM wagon, just outside the office. If you need another one, let me know. Um, a just regular silver soup can. So these are just soup cans that I just peeled the labels off um, and then painted this black and then left this one silver. You need about a cup and a half of water. Um, why do I say a cup and a half? Because uh, that is going to fill it up a little bit more than halfway, okay? Um, I don't really care how much you use. You want to use a cup, that's fine. As long as you use the same amount of water per cup, right? So if I'm using a cup for this can, make sure you use a cup for this can, okay? Um, you're going to need a thermometer. Right, and this is going to be because we're going to track the temperature of our water. Now, you want to use a digital one, fantastic. If you don't have a digital one, you have one of the one, the analog ones, then one little dial, that's fine too. Um, tape and plastic wrap, or you can also use plastic wrap and a rubber band, just something to secure um, that plastic wrap on top. Okay, um, and then you are going to need paper and a pencil. Why? Or I'm using a pen and a notebook. Why? Because we need to keep track of our temperature changes over the course of as we these are left out in the sun. Okay, so I, because I have three cans, um, I have them set up just like this. Okay, you see I have my right here, there's my silver can. Now you see I labeled it control. Why is it control? Because we didn't do anything to this can. This is just a regular old can that we just peeled the label off. Um, over here, we have the black painted can, and then we have the white painted can. And we're gonna measure our temperature um, every so often. Now, we're gonna do it about every five minutes. Um, and we're gonna do this for about 30 minutes. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, right? So six times. Or an easier way, 30 minutes divided by five minutes. How many times do we do that? 30 divided by five is six. That's right. Hey. Not only do we get some science in here, we also get a little bit of math. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna use a white cup as well. And I just, because I want to um, explain a little bit at the end with something we may have heard about colors. Okay, so that's why it shows white. Now, if you wanna go above and beyond, um, you wanna use a white can, fantastic. You wanna paint it blue, totally fine. Pink, sure, red, go for it. All right, so if you wanna test this out because we're testing which one of these solar water heaters that we've made is going to warm up the water the fastest. Okay, that's our goal, that's our challenge, right? Which one of these is going to heat up water the most? 
Okay, so you can place your bets if you want. Silver, white, or black, whatever you think, because we're gonna test that out. Okay, so I've got my cup and a half of water. I'm just gonna pour it in here. I've already done that with the other ones. Okay, and again, we wanna make sure uh, it's the same amount of water. So that's very important, um, because if we put a cup of water in here, and then a half a cup in here, obviously the half a cup has less water. It's going to warm up a lot faster. Okay, once you have all materials, um, you're good to go. And then instead of just doing this awkward transition that I do, um, we're just gonna go right into it because I have my thermometer here. And the first thing you wanna do is I'm gonna take, right, my logbook, and we're gonna write the starting temperature. So uh, I'm just gonna write start, and we are gonna uh, measure what the temperature is. Now, if all three temperatures are different, that's okay, right? Um, I got it out of the tap water, um, the sink, so they should all relatively be the same temperature. If they're different, that's okay because we're just measuring the change. You know, if this one's, you know, 51 degrees and this one's 52 degrees, I'm not concerned about that. I just wanna measure the overall change. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's turn this on. Perfect. It says, and we'll, we'll use Fahrenheit, um, but I'll also use Celsius as well. I'll write it down there. So 64 degrees outside in my house. A little chilly. All right, so let's go ahead and measure this. All right, and there it is. Dropping down a little bit. So you may have to give it a little bit of time. So we're just gonna measure the water. Uh, and you can maybe see, yeah, you can kind of see it. All right, we're at 63.6. Hard to read, it's either a nine or a six. Probably a six, since it's a nine upside down. So 63.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's our silver can, 63.9 Fahrenheit. All right, pretty good. I'm sorry, 63.6. Look at that, 63.6. All right, let's use our white can. What's our temperature there? 63, 0 .3, 0 .5, 0 .7, 0 .8, 63.8, 63.9, 63.7, 63.6, it's 0.7, 0.6. <laughs> Can't make up its mind. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and say our white can is at 63.7 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's not bad, right? A point one degree, that's 0.8, nah, fine, 0.8, okay. So that's a 0.2 degree different, two tenths of a degree, now it's at 0.7, it's fine. Make up your mind, can. Okay, measure our black can, let's see how uh, hot that is. And I like the digital thermometers because it just gives you that instant, okay, cool, I don't have to spend all the, all the is that a seven, a four, I, you know, it's in the middle, it's fine. So this is 64. Um, and we'll give it a minute, right? Because we saw this kind of fluctuating back and forth. Oh, that's a good word, fluctuating. Define that down there, fluctuating. Good word. Uh, that just means this is changing, right? So it was 64, now we're at 64, 63.9, 63.9, 64.1, 63.9, it can't make up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go and even 64 degrees. Um, and that's really good, actually, because uh, there's only about uh, point four, four tenths of a degree difference between um, our cans. And that's gonna give us a really good experiment, right? So they're all about the same temperature. Okay, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take my favorite, I love plastic wrap. Not really. It's like they have this little saw on there, but it never works. The little, yeah, I am just making a mess. I don't like plastic wrap, but it's helpful useful, right? Doesn't stick to anything but itself. Um, there we go. And then we're just gonna, you can put a rubber band around it. Um, I've got some rubber band. I'll actually put a rubber band around it. I don't wanna mess with tape. So, um, yeah, see? And that's why I don't like plastic wrap. Yes, 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 there we go. Hey, that's better. Okay, cool. Okay, once you get your plastic wrap, um, and you can, if you don't have plastic wrap, wax paper is fine. Something just to cover the top, right? Um, you could use foil if you want. Foil is not a bad option because um, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna poke our thermometer through the top, right? Um, so there we go. Okay, so once you get all your 
cans filled once you've measured them and you have written down your results like that. That's our starting temperature. Once you've written that down and you've got your cans covered, they're either taped or rubber banded, uh, join me outside and then we're going to probably hang out there um, for a little bit. I'm not going to stay out there the whole 30 minutes. Every five minutes, I'll go out there and take a temperature check. So join me outside. All right, everybody. So I've got my uh, can set up here and just make sure they're in direct sunlight. Uh, that's what we want. We want them in direct sunlight. I'm actually going to move because I want them all to be facing right, right there. Let's move that right there. Perfect. So they're all facing the sun. Okay. So now the timer. Okay. Now you're going to start the timer. Okay. So every five minutes, what I want you to do is come out here and take your temperature. So every five minutes, come out, plop your uh, temperature gauge in there. And then you have to, of course, write down your results. So every five minutes for 30 minutes, we're going to do that. Okay. Um, ready, set, and I'm not going to video this whole thing. I'm going to come out, take snapshots of this because I'm sure you don't need to see me uh, taking temperature measurements for 30 minutes. So I'm just going to take pictures of the uh, temperature. That's it. Every five minutes. Cool. All right. I'll see you guys back in 30 minutes um, and looking forward to see what's going to happen. All right. See you then. All right, everybody, so we've collected our data um, and I actually did a big jump from 30 minutes to 40 minutes because I just kind of wanted to see um, kind of what would happen. That would be kind of cool. Um, and you know what? You don't have to you know, do the 30 minute mark if you want to do an hour, if you want to do bigger jumps, um, as long as you're writing it down. I like to do five minutes because it gives me enough time and it gives enough time for that water to heat up. So um, I'm going to go ahead and post the chart up here and I made it um, using Google Sheets. Uh, it's pretty impressive, right? If you look at this, um, the silver can temperature started off at 63.6 .6 degrees Fahrenheit um, and it ended at 76.2. So it increased. Um, and how do we figure out the, you know, how much it increased? Um, you take the 40 minute temperature, right? 76.2, the highest temperature, and then subtract the starting temperature, 63.6. Um, and you get the temperature change of 12.6 degrees. So that's pretty good in 40 minutes. 
our water heated up 12.6 degrees. So not too bad. Uh, let's take a look at our black can, right? Um, and that, it started off at 64 degrees. So just a little bit uh, warmer, but again, we can, doesn't that doesn't really matter because we're just gonna subtract the ending temperature from the starting temperature. So starting temperature, 64 degrees, and we ended up at 86 degrees. Uh, that's pretty impressive. In 40 minutes, our black water can heated up um, by 22 degrees. Um, how do we know that? Because well, we can subtract 86 degrees minus 64, and that gives us 22 degrees. That, and you can even feel, right, you probably, if you picked it up, you probably felt the black can was warmer than the silver can, or if you did another color, um, like I could tell the white can, right? It was still kind of cool when I picked it up. Um, and then let's go to the white can. Um, and that started off at 63.8 degrees. Um, our ending temperature was 72.2. Pretty cool, right? Um, and then we can figure out, remember 72.2 minus 63.8, and that gives us an ending temperature of 8.4 degrees change. So that our temperature increased by 8.4 degrees. Uh, that's pretty impressive. And here's the cool thing with Google Sheets. Um, or you can even, some for my fifth graders, you guys have learned how to plot points on a graph, right? Or on a, you know, on a X, Y axis. Um, so we can actually do this um, using Google Sheets, or you can just, you know, hand jam it if you want using uh, grid paper. Um, and so really what we're gonna do is we are gonna set um, however you want. So I did it where the X axis uh, going this way um, is our time. So I did it in five minute increments and then it went up to 40 minutes, right? So basically just time is gonna be our X axis. And then our Y axis is gonna be the temperature change because um, that kind of makes the most sense um, because we wanna see that go up, okay? Um, so, looking at this graph, um, and all you're gonna do is just plot the points, right? So what does that mean? So for let's start off with our silver can, right? You're gonna start put zero, and then 63.6 uh, degrees. Now my, my graph uh, kind of moved it over a little bit, um, which, is, which is fine, you can do that. Um, but so zero, and that can just be on the x-axis, start off at 63.6, and then, five, go over five clicks, and then go up 67.2. And then 10 clicks over, or 10 grids over, and then 69.1. So that's how you plot points. Uh, and the cool thing is, as you can see, uh, so Google Sheets will do this for you, it's pretty awesome. Um, we can actually see the uh, increase, and so it's kind of a cool, um, as I'm doing it, as I'm seeing it, right? So you can see uh, the yellow line that represents our white can uh, that increased uh, the, the slowest, right? So it kind of went and then it kind of climbs up a little bit. Um, but I'm pretty sure if we left it out for a long time, it would probably just kind of keep creeping up there. Our control, um, our silver can is in the middle and that's blue. Um, and that, right, we can see they all started roughly at the same point and then they, the silver can went up a little bit, but it still kind of climbed up gradually. Uh, cool thing is you can visualize the black can because it's like, wow, that's a big temperature change. Um, and we can see it in the graph. This is the cool thing about graphing, right? You can see this. Um, you can see it started off at, uh, I totally forgot, 64 degrees, 64 degrees. Um, and then it popped all the way up to 86 degrees and you can see that like it just kind of went up uh, very, very quickly. So that's pretty awesome. Um, so uh, that's the little whiz bang stuff there with uh, Google Sheets. You could also do it by hand, um, which I also did, All right? I have my information here, uh, but just so you guys probably can't read my scratchy handwriting, I like to put it on Google Sheets so you guys can see it and enjoy it as well. Um, so what do we do here? Well, we, we built a solar collector, okay? So anything that uses solar energy to trap uh, thermal energy, uh, or in this case, heat from the sun, that's uh, called a solar collector. Now, solar water heaters, uh, they do include a solar collector. Um, so in this lab, we actually made three, you probably made two at home, um, one shiny, one white, and one black. Now. 
all three temperatures in the cans increased. Um, but we found out that the black can shows the greatest increase uh, because dark surfaces absorb more radiant energy or light energy from the sun. Okay, now hang on. We've we've probably heard this before. Um, that dark colors absorb more heat um, and light colors reflect more heat. You've probably heard your parents say, oh my goodness, it's so hot outside. Why are you wearing a black t-shirt? Um, maybe that's just my, my mom. I don't know. Um, so, um, yes, that is true, but it's not really heat. Um, they actually reflect light. So in the case of, uh, and we have to kind of go back into there, um, colors, right? When we see colors, the reason we see colors is because that is the light that's reflected back to us. Okay. So for example, uh, an apple, or in this case, my plastic wrap container that's red. The reason this is red is because white light is hitting this, this cardboard. And then the pigment in here is reflecting red light back to me. So that's why I can see red light just like you guys can see it, that it's red, okay? Um, now, in the case of white, remember white is all of the colors of the rainbow, okay? Um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Don't forget there's purple too. Rainbow colors for me and you. Um, if you are in my kindergarten and TK classes, you're actually gonna learn this very shortly where we're gonna take white light and we're actually gonna split it apart into the colors of rainbow. It's gonna be awesome, okay? Um, so in the case of white, all of the colors of the rainbow are reflecting, they're reflecting back, so that's why I see white. In the case of black, the white light is hitting the black container and all of that is being absorbed. That's why we can't see anything, we see black, okay? So in this case, right, so that's great, right? It's light, but what does that have to do with heat? Um, well, when the black can or your black t-shirt or whatever, um, absorbs the light from the sun, well, that energy gets converted into heat or thermal energy. It doesn't just go away. Um, that light turns into heat, which then it causes the water to warm up in the can, okay? Um, in the case of silver, right, silver is very reflective. Um, and so it is absorbing some of the um, light energy, the thermal energy from the sun, but not as much as the black. And our white can here, right, it's really reflecting most of the radiant, the light energy from the sun. So not a lot is being converted into thermal energy or temperature, right? That's pretty cool. Um, now I wonder, right, here's an extension. Remember we talked about you guys can try this with a blue can, um, yellow, purple, green brown, right? Um, which one, right? Do you get the same results? Do you get different results? I don't know. That'd be kind of cool to check out though. All right. So anyway, how does this benefit us? Like, so what? Like it's a cool, right? Light and black absorbs heat and white doesn't. Cool, right? Well, when we talk about heating homes um, or heating your shower or bath water, right? That's a really big expense for houses and even businesses, hot water, right? Um, Usually we have to use natural gas um, or electricity to heat up the water. Um, and that does cost a lot of money. Use a, you know, the longer you run the shower, right? The more heat you're having to generate to warm up that shower, which is more money because you have to pay for that. Um, now using a solar water heater is awesome because you're using a renewable energy source, the sun. All right. Um, now, this water, right, 86 degree water, probably not hot enough to take a shower, although it would be pretty warm. It wouldn't be too bad. Let me see. It's not like it's 86 degrees anymore. Um, but this is great because if you have a solar water heater at home, right, I wouldn't mind taking a shower in that. That's a nice warm shower, right? Um, not hot, but it's warm. It'd be comfortable. Okay, so the water probably isn't hot enough to shower in. Um, but if you leave it out in the sun long enough, I mean, it's going to get nice and warm. And this is only 40 minutes. Okay. Um, now you can still, a lot of homes, if they use solar water heaters, they also have, they still have that hot water heater, but check it out, right? 
it takes a lot less energy to heat up 86 degree water or 90 degree water to 100 degrees, right? Whatever temperature you take a shower in, right? It takes a lot less energy to heat up water when it's already warm. If I have cold water that comes from under the ground, let's say it's 50, 60 degrees, I have to increase that temperature by 40 degrees. That's pretty crazy. So that is where a lot of energy is going to be, uh, I don't wanna say wasted because you're using it, but solar water heater um, is a great way to use our renewable resources, the sun. Okay, so that is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing your experiments, right? Even if you just did, right? My silver and my black can, cool. Um, if you did silver, black, and white, if you did silver, black, and purple, um, whatever. Hey, maybe you left it out there all day and took a temperature every hour. Um, I look forward to seeing how you take this experiment and make it your own. Cool. All right, that's done with Mr. C. Uh, tune in next time, and we've got some more great STEM activities. These last two months of school, uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to focus on survival science and some more um, renewable resources. going to be really cool. All right, see you guys later. Bye.